Pac-12 media negotiations delayed again. It could be because Oregon is asking for unequal revenue share. I don't think they need to, though. Here we go. You are Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Oregon Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, it is that time once again for Locked on Ducks. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin. Thank you so much for making this your first listen or your first view of the day. If you're watching on YouTube, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your number one source to stay up to date with the Ducks. Please like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, wherever you are listening to or watch this show. Also appreciate five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy fun and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Go to hellofresh.com slash college 60 and use code college 60 for 60% off plus free shipping. So to the spring or early summer, we go waiting for a PAC 12 media deal. Now, I don't think this changes the calculus for Oregon very much because we still don't know who the big 10 commissioner is. And they still already passed on Oregon once. They could offer Oregon at any time, but they haven't. But Oregon right now is in a position where I think it's a fair question as us outsiders speculate about what the Pac-12 media deal could end up being at some point in time. And I do feel like it is going to get done eventually. Yeah, I think. Um, it, yeah, anyway, we'll see. But <laughs> it's, just, it's just been a lot. It's been a wild couple months, hasn't it? It's in its final stages. It's almost done. We got expansion teams lined up. Deal or no deal? Ah, right now it's no deal uh, with Howie Mandel. Good show back in the day. But so I think it's fair as outsiders to speculate whether or not Oregon and Washington as well, because they are now the biggest remaining football brands and therefore the most valuable schools remaining in the conference from a media rights standpoint, Right. When you're looking at academics here in the conference as a whole, Oregon is not. I hit my mic there. Oregon is not number one. But if you're just talking media rights, yeah, Oregon is the most valuable television product that the conference has. They've been the most valuable tele television product at least since 2015. They've been the most watched team in the conference. And now Washington is in that category as well as being, you know, one of the most highly viewed teams. And so the question is whether or not Oregon and Washington are going to go are going to go in and say, "Hey, we're worth more than we're getting on a percentage basis, so we want unequal revenue sharing." Oregon doesn't need it. Now, could they be asking for it? Eh, yeah, they could, maybe. The Big Ten's been out getting Oregon by tens of millions for many years now. I watched this go into Ohio State and run the ball down their throats. For a 35 28 victory i've watched this go into the rose bowl and beat wisconsin on several occasions so the financial gap has been there for quite some time and no our record against sec schools isn't stellar but again it's a program by program thing money is not the only determining factor of whether or not you win if that were the case texas football would have played in more than one national championship in the last 15 years oregon has played in more national championships than texas in the than texas in the last 15 years guess who's got more money from a revenue standpoint total coming into their athletic department it's texas by a pretty solid margin tens and tens of millions of dollars here so yes the gap is widening in the next round of media rights negotiations that's the world that Oregon lives in right now. But Oregon doesn't need to be going to the table and saying, hey, if we're going to be a flagship conference, if we're going to, you know, or a flagship school in the conference, if we're going to be, you know, a torch bearing institution like this and we're going to be one of the best teams, we need more money. We need to have an unequal share. I, I do not think that argument is credible whatsoever because that is not what has ever held Oregon back from getting to where they want to be on a national level. It didn't stop us from reaching the college football playoff and national championship game in 2014-15. And Ohio State wasn't outmanning us in that game. They just outcoached us. That, that, that's what the game was. Plus, Darren Carrington wasn't there, unfortunately. He had some drops from receivers. Like That was just a matter of Urban Meyer, one of the best college football coaches in the history of the sport, outcoached Mark Helfrich 
who since he uh, w- was fired as Oregon's head coach, had a brief stint with the Bears. He's now working uh, at, at Fox as an analyst for college football because he wasn't that attractive of a coaching candidate outside of the University of Oregon, right? So are we surprised about that? No, not really. So I, I don't find it to be you know uh, an area of concern for Oregon fans to say, wow, the Pac-12 media deal. Well, what if it comes in below this number? And look, my takeaway on you know them kicking the can down the road again on announcing this thing is it's either going to surpass our expectations or come in way below our expectations. But regardless of what it is, Oregon, you know, could be in there along with Washington saying, look at the numbers here. We're worth more to the conference on a percentage basis than we're getting. Why are we getting the same as Arizona State and Colorado who are not pulling their weight? Colorado might start with Dion there now. But why are we getting the same as, you know, Arizona State and Arizona who don't bring in as large of a TV audience as we do? But it's also in Oregon's best interest to have the conference as strong as possible. Because you want to play in a league where a win means something. And Oregon, especially in a 12-team playoff, doesn't need to be in the Big Ten to make the college football playoff, obviously. And you also want to be able to get, once you have 12 teams, a high enough seed to where you can maybe get a first-round bye, which the top four teams receive in a 12-team format. And you want the conference to be in as competitive of a place as, as it possibly can be. So... I think that coupled with the fact that Oregon is not short on money, never has been, at least in, you know, this modern era, as long as Phil is there, I I have a hard time seeing that Oregon needs to be in there pounding the table saying, give us unequal revenue sharing, or we're going to go elsewhere. Like there's nowhere else to go, not going to the big 12. That's not going to happen because anywhere Oregon goes, Washington goes and Washington as a university is not going to go to the big 12. That i that will not happen. Would they go to the Big Ten? Yep, of course. If an offer comes down the road one day, will they say yes? Probably. Yeah, I, I'd have a hard time seeing how they wouldn't. And I get it. I, don't, I wouldn't want them to, but I understand why that would happen. But the other thing, too, with you know the idea of unequal revenue sharing is if Oregon gets a greater slice of the pie, well, then you have other schools in the conference who might say, well, wait a minute. Why would we stay in a conference where we're not going to be able to get this much? And those schools are when we could like Arizona and Arizona state, for instance, if they were getting significantly less in Oregon and Washington, right? Let's say the deal just as a hypothetical were to average, you know, 28 million per school per year and Oregon and Washington, instead of it being 28 across the board, they took like 2 million from each school. So they were down at 26 and Oregon and Washington were up at whatever 1 million. I don't even know how that would work, frankly, but let's say they did that and they were in the mid thirties. Well, then Arizona state and Arizona might say, uh, yeah, okay. If you're going to treat us like this, we might just go over there. And that's not in Oregon's best interests either, because then they'd be relying on a big 10 offer, which I don't believe is coming in the near future. And then that's, that's not a place you want to be. Because then if you have schools wanting to jump ship, and they do, and the Big 12 will take them in a heartbeat, then you're left with a conference that has to expand further with G5 schools, and the conference is now significantly weaker than before. So I, I don't think that that's you know, a great – I don't think that's a great uh, great option there for Oregon. But a couple questions came in on you know what could be holding the deal up, which unequal revenue sharing is one thing, but there are other factors as well. Those are not available to you on FanDuel, but everything else is. Grand slams, no hitters, and double plays are back. There's no better place to get in on the Major League Baseball action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on, sign up, place your first bet, and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. Don't miss your chance for that no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. So these media rights thoughts do stem from a question from Dan Sanders. He hit me up. Get this, everybody. 
via the Facebook messages. Yep, you can do it on there too. YouTube comments, Twitter at smalls underscore 55 or at locked on ducks mentions and DMs wide open. You can DM me on Facebook as well. I'll check the messenger every now and then. Uh, he says, okay, in your estimation, what is the likelihood that one or both of the two following hurdles are holding the TV deal up? One, as the new stars of the conference, Oregon and Washington want a bigger cut of revenues, but the four corner schools, Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, Colorado, are saying, no way, George, give them that and we got your mark on speed dial. We're in the real driver's seat here, while the green and purple got nothing but a week, quote, maybe someday from the Big Ten. As I just laid out, I, I think that is possible. It's a hypothetical. And I don't think Oregon needs to put themselves in that situation, though. I don't know that it's particularly like it because there are other realignment factors at play with regards to, you know, what conference a particular institution wants to be affiliated with, right? Research dollars are massive and they dwarf media rights dollars by a lot. And it's not particularly close. And being in the PAC 12 gives you a greater ability to have more research money coming into your university via you know grants, other schools, donors, government funding, whatever. Like it comes from an assortment of places. Being in the PAC 12, they dwarf the amount of research that's done in the Big 12. And look, that doesn't matter to you and me, but it matters to these university presidents big time. It's why you know Arizona could go to the Big 12 tomorrow if they wanted to, and Brett Yormark would take them, but they want to stay in the Pac-12. Because, yes, they want to compete athletically, but they also want to do as well as they can academically because that's worth hundreds of millions of dollars, right? So like Stanford and Cal, for instance, do over a billion dollars in research. Colorado does close to a billion. Cal does like 900, 850, 900 million dollars in this sort of stuff. And when you're in the Pac-12, you have access and you have greater standing in that sense with regards to how much money you can actually accumulate for your school. So Utah, for instance, when they joined the PAC 12, they're doing something like, oh gosh, it was in, it was around like a hundred million dollars in research. Okay. Now they're over 600 million and their goal is to get to a billion dollars. So I know everyone talks about, and I understand why, because it goes to athletic departments and obviously that stuff matters. But athletic directors don't vote on realignment. They may have some input, but presidents are the ones voting. And being in the Pac-12 is much more valuable financially to a university president than being in the Big 12, depending on the academic standing of that particular school and their goals. But potentially, that's it's worth uh, a lot. So the other thing, too, and, and this is kind of piggybacking off of what I was just saying before I get to the second part of Dan's question those four corner schools would only jump to the big 12, I think, because of one of the, the factor I just laid out. If the Pac-12 media deal is like an abject disaster. And, and I do think that I, I, I've talked about this on Locked On Pac-12 a lot. Every time the can gets kicked down the road here, I have one of two thoughts. The deal is either going to be way better than anyone is expecting. It's going to blow us out of the water or it's going to be way worse than anyone is expecting. And you will have schools think of thinking about whether or not they want to stay in the conference long-term. And the longer we go without a deal, the more I think one of those two outcomes is likely. I'd be fine getting something down the middle, but he, George Klyovkov is either trying to pull a rabbit out of the hat or he's scraping the bottom of the barrel and finding nothing there. So I, I think that's just kind of where the, the negotiations are at right now. But they also, you know, there's no legal requirement. The legal requirement for uh, schools to notify the Mountain West, <clears throat> San Diego State, to leave the conference is June 30th. So if you're looking for like a hard date on when the media deal really needs to get announced with expansion as a part of it, and San Diego State should be a part of it, needs to be a part of it for many reasons. June 30th is, is the hard, hard date. So doing it before then would be uh, would be preferable. Here's the second part of Dan's question. Uh, do I think it could be that or that Oregon and Washington want the option to leave the pack with low exit fees and short notice if that call from the Midwest ever comes and possibly the four corners wanting the same things if the green and purple bail on them and they want to go to the Big 12. So this one I think is more likely than demanding unequal revenue sharing because I don't think that's, you know, significantly moving the needle here unless you did a dramatic split between Oregon and Washington and everybody else. And, and I don't know that they'd be able to draw that big of a gap in the in the value there. But this 
could be something that's holding it up. I think that's entirely plausible that Oregon and Washington, who very clearly would go to the Big Ten, Oregon athletically and financially, Washington uh, financially, but also academically. Washington does over a billion in research, too. And the Big Ten is the premier uh, academic conference among the Power Five, right? Obviously, Ivy League. Actually, no, the Big Ten actually surpasses the Ivy League in total amount of research. But like academic standing probably edge the Ivy League, but Big Ten, very prestigious academic conference. Very, very prestigious in that sense. USC and UCLA didn't go there by accident. UCLA is like the most applied to public school in the country. USC is a private school with, with pretty high academic standards. So low exit fees and uh, short notice if the call from the Midwest ever comes. So that, that could be a holdup here because what he's referring to is what's called a grant of rights. And most of us, I think, know and understand that term by now because these talks have gone on for so long. But the grant of rights is saying you, the Pac-12 conference, and whatever media rights partners you, you work with, have the right to broadcast our sporting events, right? With the details of said contract, football games will be here, basketball here, baseball here, softball, right? All that sort of stuff for tier one, tier two, and tier three rights across the conference. And I could see Oregon and Washington because they do seem to, and they've been pretty quiet in this whole process, which gives credence to this notion, have an eye on the future with the big 10 in that conversation. So if they're looking for a way out in the contract, yeah, that could be a sticking point. That could be a holdup. That could be complicated. I could see that. Do I have inside information there? No, unfortunately I do not. But of the two, you know, um, possibilities that Dan laid out here on what's holding it up, I, I think exit clauses and, you know, being able to get out of a grant of rights is more likely to be a factor than than unequal revenue sharing but good question dan appreciate it and love the uh, first ever question from facebook messenger i got a comment one time from a duck fan that uh in the middle of the season this is the only other facebook message i've ever gotten from one of you i don't even remember who it was because obviously I've, i blocked him he uh, basically came in there just raging mad absolutely furious that in the middle of the eight game winning streak i said i, I don't know if they're running the table here and going to the college football playoff. I want them to, but I don't think they will. Just was tearing me a new one there. Thought I was ridiculous and an idiot and all this sort of stuff. And I just like laughed and blocked him. And then Oregon lost two of their last three regular season games. So, you know, it's just, it's it's okay. It's okay. You're always, always welcome to, to disagree with me on the show. Of course, YouTube comments, DMs, whatever. Just ask you to be polite. The internet's a sufficiently negative space. Let's not contribute to that any further. Speaking of all this meteorites talk, I um, I guess Aaron Flowers didn't get the news that the Pac-12 is a dying conference. You should never go there, and there's more money in the Big Ten, and that's the place to be. Yeah, I'm being sarcastic here because Aaron Flowers committed to Oregon over the weekend, which is a great thing to see. He is in the 2024 recruiting class, yes, but now that Deuce Robinson did commit to USC, we're on to 2024 on the recruiting front because there's nothing remaining unless they add a transfer tight end, <clears throat> Malcolm Epps. There's nothing remaining in the 2023 cycle from a, a player acquisition standpoint, but Flowers chose uh, he's a four-star safety out of uh, the state of Texas in the class of 2023 played some cornerback in in high school as well and what one thing that I always look for when setting my expectations for a particular recruit because you see star ratings all over the place right he's a five star he's a four star he's got a lower grade he's got a higher grade and yes there are exceptions to this rule because Justin Herbert was three-star Mariota was a three-star they didn't have a lot of big schools going after them two of the best quarterbacks in program history one thing that I always look for particularly with with non-quarterbacks is who else wanted them and I and this applies to basketball players as well because if you've got a four-star prospect or a three-star prospect in any sport and the schools going after him are Alabama Ohio State, Oklahoma. That to me lends credence to the idea that he's a higher caliber recruit or has greater potential than a four or three star who's being offered or chased after by, you know, Arizona, Cal, and Nevada. 
So that's good news on the Aaron Flowers front because the school that was going after him was USC. And again, I go back to this, you know, media rights talk. I really don't think high school recruits and John Garcia and I have talked about this here on the show before. High school recruits are not paying as close of attention to media rights negotiations as we are. Doesn't mean they don't matter, but it's not at the top of their minds. They're looking for relationships with the coaching staff they're looking for nil opportunities and they're looking to play at a school that's in a reputable conference that has a history of winning and they want an opportunity you know a path to play so a couple points here on flowers he chose oregon over usc most notably they were kind of the school that that the ducks were neck and neck with here And, and again not a huge surprise right oregon gets the defensive recruit USC gets the offensive guy. Deuce Robinson goes there. Aaron Flowers comes here. But the other schools that were after him, kind of in that final mix, were Bama, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. That's a pretty good list of schools to be able to beat out. While the Pac-12 doesn't have a media rights deal, by the way. But anyway, uh, coming out of the Lone Star State, I love recruiting out of Texas. I think of the three big states for recruiting, you got to have two that you can go into consistently. California, Texas, Florida. If you're going to recruit at a national level the way Oregon wants to, to you know get to the college football playoff, someday hopefully win that national championship, you got to be in two of those three states. And, and California and Texas seem to be the ones that you know Dan Lanning and company are you know most prolific at. And it doesn't mean you never go after a Florida recruit, but they just don't have quite as many ties to that area. You know, Will Stein comes from that area. Hampton was kind of down in that region at, at Tulane. Um, as the D.C. and the state of Louisiana there. Uh, but the other thing, you know, th- that I like about this this recruitment is after this season, Oregon has depth at the safety position, yes. But they're losing four guys who are all going to play this year or have been playing significant roles. Like, I have questions about what the safety position will look like talked about him last week if you if you want to hear more about him and what the proje- what, what my projected projected depth chart is but you're losing jamal hill you're losing steve stevens you lose and you know hill's gonna slide down an outside linebacker it seems brian addison and then evan williams has only got one year left transferring over from fresno state so this is a position that oregon should be going after in 2023 and flowers is a guy who was pretty highly coveted and i i you know, hope he stays committed to the Ducks in in the long run because that's a position group that we need to continue uh, to build up. Though we do have other guys, right? DeCambra and Turner came in in this class. Cody DeCambra from the Vegas area, Tyler Turner from Texas, and then Trajan Williams is in there, four star from Jefferson High School in Oregon. You've got uh, JJ Greenfield in the room, Damon David in the room, but you, you want to keep adding bodies there because you know attrition, transfers, all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, finding guys who pop. Uh, so good, good addition there. And he played some corner in high school as well. So maybe a little uh, positional versatility. A couple of basketball notes to wrap up uh, today's show. Luke War is in the transfer portal, six foot nine, uh, going to be a graduate student, uh, grad transfer, I believe. Um, not, not, a, not a huge deal here. I mean, he, he was a guy who kind of got thrust into action more than he should have because of injuries to the front court. Guys like Nate Biddle and Folly Dante were out. And, you know, Khalil Ware was still working his way into the fold and Luke War had to, you know, shoulder more responsibility than, you know, he's probably capable of at the power five level. But I certainly wish him nothing but the best. All he ever did for Oregon was show up, work hard, play hard, have some nice moments. Um, but the thing about this is it, it opens up a roster slot. And I think that's a good thing overall for Dane Altman and his staff. Um, he's also got to find another uh uh, assistant coach, one of them left to go back to Oklahoma with Porter Moser, who he'd worked with previously when he was on staff with them at Loyola Chicago when they made that great run to the Final Four. Sister Jean, um, but he's in the portal, not not too concerned about it. You know, he, he's a guy who came in, kind of gave some effort, maybe a bucket here or there. He was a big body that was on the floor. I, I think whether you're looking at you know somebody like KJ Evans, the five star freshman coming in replacing his minutes directly maybe even playing more than than luke war did with khalil Ware transferring out we still don't know what infali dante is going to do and and we haven't heard on that front we also haven't heard about gary which means maybe 
maybe Dante was spotted on campus last week. Maybe might be back. We'll see. But um, yeah, so all the best to Luke War. Not losing a huge, you know, production guy there, and I think Oregon can uh, replace that pretty, pretty easily. But uh, last thing here, boy, I tell you this, this, this Jackson Shellstad hype train. It's just now. If you're watching here on YouTube, you saw my hand go up after talking about a train. So apparently, this is like the Hogwarts. Hogwarts Express with the flying Ford Anglia from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets because it's going off the track. But that's kind of how it feels right now. And Shellstad went to the Nike Hoop Summit. You should go check out some of of his highlights. He looks pretty awesome. He really does. Handle, shot, shot making, court vision. He looks really, really good. And you know a guy that he was playing with at that Nike Hoop Summit in Portland. It was Bronny James. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The Nike connection, there could be a role for him. Oregon, Nike, Bronny James, Shellstad, teammate. I'm, I don't think it's the least likely thing in the world whatsoever. I'm not predicting it he's got other offers he's got other opportunities talented guy but so i'm playing together a little bit and i just thought "Mm, boy what could be appreciate everyone listening see you next time have a wonderful rest of your day and go ducks